Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to solve the problem of trying to understand the interactivity API in WordPress for the very first time. Let me explain. If you're anything like me and you're trying to understand the interactivity API, you'll come to this official documentation page and it lets you know that you can scaffold your first interactive block uh, with this little npx command. However, if you do that, in my opinion, the block that it creates is not helpful. It doesn't help you learn or understand anything. It will give you this block. So it looks like this on the editor admin side and then on the public visitor side, it just looks like this and you can click toggle and that's it. So in my opinion, when I first tried this, in my own mind, I'm thinking, well, how do I work with like actual block attributes? Like, like if the user typed into a field or like made a select drop down choice or like how do i deal with real data or real properties or you know how do i make anything happen beyond just a static toggle uh, and then i spent you know the next 2 or 3 hours like understanding that myself so in this video i want to save you those 2 or 3 hours you know you don't need to go dig through uh, the documentation and struggle and flounder for 3 hours let me um, show you my boilerplate so you can get up to speed with the basics in maybe you know 10 or 20 minutes. Cool. So in the description for this video, you'll find a link to my uh, GitHub WordPress boilerplate repo. Uh, you can download the whole repo, but in particular, we're interested in the folders named interactivity block. And then uh, I won't bore you with it, but it's the same thing if you want to use Tailwind instead of just regular CSS. But let's start with this one. Just interactivity dash block. Cool, so if you download that folder from my GitHub repo and then just place it in your local WordPress installations uh, plugins folder, and then let's go activate that plugin. So let's see, go into plugins, uh, it's called interactivity block, just go ahead and activate it. Let's go edit uh, a blog post. So I'm gonna delete, this was the one that came from the WordPress boilerplate, and now let me install uh, mine. So it'll, or not install, just use. So it has a little smiley face, it's called interactivity block. Cool. So right away, uh, it gives you two inputs. Let's type into these. So like sky color, say like happy blue. For grass color, say like uh, bright green with like three exclamations and then click update. So this is real, you know, user entered dynamic data. And then on the front end, if you refresh, aha, much better. So this isn't meant to be super complex or impressive. It's meant to just actually let us sink our teeth into or wrap our minds around the interactivity API. So I can click this button and it toggles that real dynamic value that the user typed in. Same thing with this button. Now before we go over like what all these buttons are doing and what this text is getting rendered down here, let's just go actually look at the code together in VS Code. So just go ahead and open up uh, our interactivity block plugin folder, open that up in your text editor. Cool, and then just a quick public service announcement. If you wanna follow along in your command line, be sure to run an npm install. That'll take about a minute or so, and then run an npm start. Then it'll just run in the background, perfect. Okay, so I've got my npm start command running. I can hide that now. And what I wanna show you is in the src folder, uh, we're gonna look at two files mainly. The first file is render.php. So what in the world is going on here? Let's just work through the, the different features that are here. So the first feature is this button that says toggle, you know, viewing the sky color. And then it's that real dynamic value that the user typed in on the admin side. So let's look at how this is happening. Back in our render.php file on line number nine, we see a button. That's the button you're clicking on. It says toggle the view sky color. And then where the value actually appears, let's, let me show you what's going on here. We're using good old fashioned PHP. Uh, just like it's the 1990s, and we're echoing out, uh, you know, a PHP variable. So that's not interesting. What's interesting is the span that's wrapped around that. So in other words, this is happening on the server side, right? The server is 1990 echoing out the PHP, but it's wrapped in a span, and this is the WordPress interactivity API. So there's these different data-wp, and then dash to do different things, but they all begin with data dash WP. And in this case, we're saying this element should be hidden and then you give it like a true or false value. And then that's what's letting that value either display or not display. Now, how are we toggling it? Well, when you actually click on this button, we're firing off an action. So again, it's data dash WP on and then, you know, dash dash, uh, like the actual event you're watching for. So what's cool here is we're not having to write vanilla JavaScript. We're not having to use React. The interactivity API 
is essentially our new version of React for the WordPress front end. So when this button gets clicked on, it's going to call our action that's named toggle sky color. Now, where in the world is that coming from? Where does that function live? It lives in our view.js file. Uh, here we have actions, and then I have a function named toggle sky color. Within that function, we're making context available. Don't worry, we'll talk about what in the world context is in just a moment. But then I'm just looking on the context. I'm setting the property of sky color to just be the opposite of whatever it currently is. Cool. Now let's talk about what in the world context is. Like, in other words, how does this function or how does the code inside of this div, how does it have access to those properties of those little pieces of context? Like, um, you know, this value and this value. Well, that's where we want to talk about this top line uh, in render.php. So I created a PHP variable, and this has nothing to do with the interactivity API. This is just a PHP associative array, right? I have, you know, a property and a value, a property and a value, so on and so forth. However, the question is, where am I making this available? Simple, on line number seven. So this line of code is what made the div as a whole sort of come to life with the interactivity API. And then this line, this is the automagic line of code. I was so happy when I figured out how to use this. So it's echoing out a bit of JavaScript. It's taking PHP data and variables and arrays, and it's converting it into JavaScript, and it's making it available on that opening div tag. So you echo out, and then the WordPress function you know, has this exact name, and you give it PHP data, and then it turns it into JavaScript data. Now, the easiest way to make sense of this is if you just look in your Chrome DevTools, so here's that div, and what I'm trying to show you is this attribute called data-wp-context. Look, it turned our PHP associative array into JavaScript. The reason this is cool is you could do anything you wanted up here in the land of PHP. You could do all sorts of dynamic things, right? I mean, you could take a 30-hour course on how to do dynamic WordPress PHP-ish things. But the idea is that then we're making that available, we're feeding that into the interactivity API. Now, anything that's nested inside this wrapper div has access to that. So we can call our actions, or we can look uh, for that piece of context, like for sub properties, so on and so forth. So we've already looked at toggle sky color and you know toggle grass color is the exact same thing. Now let's look at this button. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. This button that when you click it, it says how to access attribute from JavaScript. Let me explain what's going on here. So when you click that button, we're firing off an action that's named access example. If you go into view.js, here it is, access example. We're making the context available from this convenient you know, context variable, and then we can use it. Let me have this come full circle for you. If we go into render.php, imagine we had another uh, property up in this array data. Like at the very start here, you could say like quotes, uh, let's call it like dog name, and then set that to equal like marks a lot comma, cool. So if you save that and refresh, now there's a new little piece of context called dog name that's available to the interactivity API. So back in view.js, like in this access example, instead of just alerting this, you know, this annoying alert that we clearly see is working, we could also say like console.log context dot dog name. So give that a save, refresh, check the console, and then actually click the button. So we see the alert, and there we see it in the console. Cool, so it's that easy to access uh, your real data from within your view.js, right? From within your actions. Now the final concept I wanna cover that's gonna make this come full circle is, so we've seen how to output just 1990s traditional echoed PHP, right? This uh, has nothing to do with the interactivity API. This is just echoing a PHP variable. However, and here's what's really cool, down here on this paragraph, it says this is an example of grass color being visible via the interactivity API instead of traditional PHP echo. Now this is what's cool. So again, just a directive, data-wp, and there's one called text. And then you just say that it's equal to, and then we can look inside of context, we look inside of attributes, say grass color. You could also change this to dog name if you wanted to, but if you refresh, Whoops, it actually wouldn't be attributes.dogName, it would just be context.dogName. There you see it. So the reason this is cool is because uh, it's both client-side JavaScript, but it's also server-side rendering. So this looks like, um, you know, it's, it's just gonna put that value into this DOM element, but it's actually also happening on the server side. In other words, don't use your dev tools, just 
use your actual old fashioned view page source, right? This doesn't have client side JavaScript. This is server side rendered. This is great for SEO accessibility. And there you can see uh, in the actual old fashioned view source, Barks a lot actually lives in that element. So it's not just being added there dynamically with JavaScript. It truly exists server side. I, mean, I know I'm repeating myself, but when I saw that this is how it worked, this was really, it's worth repeating is all I'm trying to say. For the longest time, I've wanted WordPress to have something like this, um, something like Next.js, right? Sort of this marriage between old fashioned server side rendering and then JavaScript comes along and hydrates the DOM, but where the, the awkward dance between those two is already done for you by some sort of framework or automatic system. And with the interactivity API, we finally have that. So yes, it exists in the DOM on the initial render, but you could change this, uh, you know, by clicking on a button with JavaScript in real time. So let's practice that right now. Uh, let's have a button down here that says like, change the dog name. Let's give this a try, right? So we go into render.php, maybe below that we could have a new paragraph and say like, uh, change the dog name to woof. And then let's just build this out, right? So on the button, you could say data dash WP on dash dash click equals, and let's go create an action. We can name it anything, but let's say like actions dot uh, change dog name. Uh, so we can save that and then go into our view.js file and just add a new action. So uh, let's say change dog name, uh, just an arrow function. Be sure to have a comma there. And then I'm literally just gonna borrow this line of code. This just makes context available from within this function. And then you can just say like context dot dog name equals woof. Let's give that a save, refresh. Uh, so here we see um, the 1990s like server side rendered value that was there even if you clicked view page source. But if I click this button, it changes to woof. Now, again, that might not seem impressive if you're not familiar with the WordPress world. The reason this is so cool to me is it's that initial server side rendered HTML and then the DOM comes along and it's just, it's seamless. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. I didn't have to architect a system where that's going on. The interactivity API has my back. It's already set it up for me. For the last few years, I've sort of felt abandoned in WordPress. I felt like as a developer, the things that I was wanting to achieve were almost at odds with the way that WordPress was going, but I'm so happy that the interactivity API is here. I feel like it has our back as developers. Cool. Anyways, that's going to bring this video to a close. I've rambled on long enough. Hopefully this gave you uh, a bird's eye view, or at least made you a little bit familiar uh, with the basics of the interactivity API. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my premium full length courses. Uh, in the description to this video, you'll find a link to my official website, learnwebcode.com. If you want to, you can scroll through the marketing pitch, but you're probably interested in this curriculum link up at the top here. If you click on that, you'll see that my Learn Web Code bundle uh, has five courses, and this lets you see which of the five courses are actually included as of today. Uh, so Figma to Full Stack Bootcamp, Laravel, MySQL, React.js, and WordPress. Also, if you join Learn Web Code Premium, in addition to these five courses, any courses I put out in the future will automatically be added to your account at no extra cost in the future. Cool. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more web development tutorials.